Hello, everyone. Good to be back with you. We are coming to the end of the chapter called Work Versus Work in Search for a Nonviolent Future. I must say, just on a personal note, I, I am pleased uh, as I read through the book, uh, first of all, that there are no major um, theoretical issues that I would change anything in, even though the book's been around for a while. And secondly, that, you know, I think it does get its uh, points across. So uh, the point that we were making up until recently, actually, there were two points. One is that nonviolence can be used in any relationship, which is why I thought that the term civil resistance is too limiting. Nonviolence is a human capacity. Any individual can use it, and therefore it can be used in any relationship. And we tend to notice it when it's used in the relationship of uh, relative powerlessness. Because we think, because of our material orientation, we think that all power comes out of the barrel of a gun. Uh, we think that a, a, a group that's being oppressed is powerless. And that is exactly the impression that the oppressor is trying to give. But you are only powerless if you neglect your inner resources. And striking and startling when nonviolence happens from below, for, you know, in the behalf of the otherwise powerless people, because when the other kind of power is stripped away, then we see that we have only nonviolence to fall back upon. And a lot of people have gotten into nonviolence, not because they're aware of it, not because they believe in it, not because they even think that they have a soul, however you want to call that, uh, but because they have no other recourse. So then when you find yourself propelled into a situation where you had to fall back on your own resources, you're then in a position to really develop those resources and discover what they are and how effective they are in influencing others who also have that resonance, that resource within them. And this is where having the right frame of reference helps and this is what brings me to my second point, and I hope it hasn't gotten annoying in the book because I keep on making this point that uh, history and the mass media have let us down.